sisters around the world keeping up the momentum with our Tenaris Turnium Workers World Council is logistically difficult and costly. Continuity is imperative to build a strong relationship of trust among global participants, especially when dealing with multiple ethnic backgrounds and aspects of your network, at least be informed of using this method of communication. It's fast, cheap, and for most participants, easily accessible. The downfall of this method of communication is information could be misconstrued easily due to translation confusion and misunderstandings. All of these things being said, the benefits far outweigh the hurdles of creating a strong international union network. Even with myself keeping in contact with USW Local 9548, President Cody Alexander of Tenaris Algoma, all in the name of solidarity and forward momentum to make Tenaris aware that we communicate and communicate well. Companies like Tenaris try to implement third world way of business and third world ways of treating their employees. They have come to realize that doing business in North America has proven to be difficult in railroading collective agreements <coughs> that have been progressing for 40 plus years. The problem for us is they use their massive global supply chain to blackmail and threaten our jobs here at home. Sadly, they are making progress, slowly chewing away our pensions, wages, and basic lines of progression. What they fail to recognize is that we are making progress as well, communicating with our fellow Tenaris Turnium workers around the globe. Sooner or later, Tenaris Turnium and the CEO Paulo Rogo will have no choice but to recognize the World Council for what it is an international trade union. We are starting to get a foothold on their ideology, and sooner or later, we will keep up the good fight. It will come back to backfire. The contract work, which is about. Uh, since the beginning, we are trying to keep a bit of a tag who works for the team. Uh, we are kind of proud to say that finally this year, we have our first women delegate to participate in the council. Uh, the relation with women employees it has been part of the conversation since the beginning. A bit of a problem is that there are not many women working in the sector. Uh, we know that for us in Canada, women start still far, far away from being fairly represented at the workplace, but Canada is great compared with the rest of the world. Then most workplaces in the council have no women working there or very, very few, then trying to get women has been difficult and we are proud that finally we have a, a women working for Ternium in Argentina that is a delegate in the council. This year we formed the Youth International Council in which members uh, 35 years old or younger <coughs> are trying to connect among themselves internationally to start talking about their needs. We have been not as successful working with contracted out workers or uh, subcontracted companies. We keep the tag, we know who they are. In several countries, the same union represent permanent and contracted workers. Then, in many cases, the union bring the voice of both. But in many other cases, like in Canada, we do not talk in the name of the contracted out workers. Uh, we have been uh, discussing it. Uh, it is something that every year when we get together, we can explore what we can do, how we can do it. Uh, when is the next round of bargaining? What do you have in your language that we can use? But uh, we have been not as successful in the sector of contracted and workers as we have been making some still far away from being there, but some advances on the women and in the youth. And then I'm mentioning this because that's the way that we are keeping our staff. We have permanent uh, uh, contracted out, we have women, men, we have. Uh, senior and young people, we try to keep that tag year after year also as a way of informing ourselves of what changes have been happening in the network. Is your question more geared towards like workers on the ground, like or maintenance or just contractors in general? I'm 
just struck in the mindset for which it's not been paying a lot of attention to recently. The statistics are ginormous. I mean, in Peru and in Chile, 50 and 60 percent of the mine workers are not permanent workers. And a, a new company investing in Brazil is Anglo-American. It's planning on 55 percent contracted out workers just from the get-go. Right. So, not to mention the statistics up in Sudbury in terms of how many uh, contracted out workers compared to the permanent. So I just am curious about that dynamic in the steel sector in these companies that are part of this network. In our, in our facility, I know they're doing, uh, since we've come back from our shutdown, um, they've been contracting out more maintenance work. And they keep looming the headcount excuse over our, over our heads. You know, we have a certain headcount that we have to adhere to, so they contract out the maintenance work and give us the excuse that they're having a hard time filling the position. So we're in the process now of reading that. But I know, I know that the reason why they do that is so they don't have to pay pensions, they don't have to pay benefits, they don't have to pay, even if it's more money hourly, it's, they're not paying that out. It's all, the way Canaris works, they're very funny the way they allocate their money and their budgeting, right? Certain, for certain uh, upgrades and, and things like that, all come from different piggy banks and different cost centers. So they like to manipulate that and, and hide money that way. Hello. 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 Hello.